video which is dedicated to physics. And today we are going to discuss differential form of Gauss theorem or also called differential form of Gauss law. Well, you must have read Gauss law of electrostatics. We also call it Gauss theorem of electrostatics. If you haven't, then you can refer to one of my videos which is totally dedicated to Gauss theorem of electrostatics. But here in this video, we are going to use that theorem and we would try to find its differential form. As you know, in physics and all our derivations, we use mathematical tools and differentiation and integration, they are the two perfect mathematical tools that solve our purpose. Either we are doing differentiation or we are doing integration and we also use limits. So the chapter limits and derivatives, that is also really important for us to use in physics. Thus, here we are going to discuss differential form. Whatever theorem we derive, whatever laws are there, we try to put them into mathematical form. We try to denote some symbols and try to mention each and every theorem or law in terms of symbols. So whenever we have any statement, we try to put it mathematically as well. You must have remembered that in our video lecture series based on vector analysis, we derived Gauss divergence theorem, we derived Stokes theorem and whatever rules were there, all the time we put everything mathematically as well. So we had those symbols, dot product, cross product, integral, everything was there and all the statements they were put in mathematical terms as well. This Gauss theorem, it's a physical concept. It's a real life concept when we actually see that the charges which are present over some region and definitely electric field lines would be there. What sort of atmosphere is being created if you consider a particular surface which is enclosing a particular charge and electric field lines are passing through it. But in all the derivations, we use integration, we use the symbols to actually come up to some conclusion. And for this reason, we always try to put our theorems or laws either in differential form or in integral form because these are the two main mathematical tools that we often use for the derivation. Here, we are going to discuss differential form. Let's get started. For this, we have to use Gauss law, the Gauss theorem of electrostatics. So, let's put down what is the Gauss law. This is how the statement of Gauss law looks like. It states that the surface integral, so here you can see the surface integral, we are using double integral of the electric field. And you know, how do we represent surface integral of any vector? Electric field is definitely a vector. So we have to write down this double integral and then E dot ds. And you must know that this E dot ds is what? This is E dot n cap ds. So whenever there is surface, this is how we use. We always consider or refer to the unit vector which is perpendicular to the surface okay so this the statement says that the surface integral of the electric field over the closed surface so here we have this circle for a charge enclosed in it in vacuum is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed in the surface so here you can see we have this charge q and there is surface and this q charge is spread everywhere so everywhere there is this q charge okay and whenever charges are present electric field will be there because what is electric field in simpler terms electric field is the force experienced around the charge how much influence of a particular charge is so its field is present around it we have studied scalar field, we have studied vector field, so you should be clear with what the term field actually represents. So if charges are present, 
electric field would definitely be there. But again, whenever some vector function is spread over some region, we try to consider a particular surface out of it and try to find out the value over that particular region or that particular surface. Here we have considered the surface or we can call this as surface S, okay. So this whole surface, this is surface S, which is enclosing volume, uh, sorry, which is enclosing charge Q. Always remember, whenever we have something which is closed, that would always enclose something. You must have remembered that when we discuss curl in terms of Cartesian coordinates or when we discuss the Stokes theorem, we say there is some closed boundary which encloses some surface. Uh, when we were discussing divergence in terms of Cartesian coordinates and especially the Gauss divergence theorem, there we said that we have a closed surface S which is enclosing some volume. So whenever we have anything which is closed, then make sure it is going to enclose something. And here we are saying that we have a closed surface S which is enclosing charges. So the Q charge it is present all over this surface S and the region is shown with this light blue color. Okay, so it is spread over everywhere and then if charges are there, some sort of charges, if a group of charges, alike charges are present over some region, definitely they would create some sort of electric field. The surface integral, so if we know the electric field and if we just take the surface integral of the electric field integrated over that closed surface, then that is simply equals to 1 by epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is what? It is the permittivity of the medium, whatever medium we are considering. And here specifically we say the medium is vacuum. Vacuum, why? Because normally the values that we pick they come out to be 1. So, there are no any specific values for, for vacuum. It's the standard reference which we pick because we need not to multiply our calculation with any specific numbers. So that's why vacuum is chosen. Here, so if it's vacuum, still charges are present over there. So, that if you take the surface integral of the electric field which is present over the region, Whatever result would be obtained, that result would be similar to the result obtained if you simply divide the permittivity of that region with the amount of charge present. So these two terms, since we have placed equal sign here, this means that these two terms are equal. They mean the same. The meaning is same. Because when charges are present, electric field would be there. So either we can know what's the field present there using some instrument. We can use any instrument to measure the or to detect the electric field there. Or if we are really sure, we can actually by some experiments, we can find the magnitude of the charge present. We can find how much charge is present there. So if we know the amount of charge present, we can simply divide it with the permittivity of the medium. Here, the medium is vacuum. So whatever result is obtained, that would be same to that of the result obtained which we would have if we integrate the electric field because the electric field is a vector function and to find its value and it is spread over the entire region. So we cannot uh, simply just count it or just do any sort of uh, summation calculation that is not possible you know that it is spread over the entire region so you can see it's a continuous function. It is continuous. It is continuous everywhere and spread over this entire region. So we cannot use any basic mathematical operations like summing up the value. No, it's not possible. Here we have to integrate. Where the things are continuous, we have to use integration. So then we have to integrate this uh, value of electric field over the entire region S. That answer would be same to that of Q by epsilon. This is Gauss law. The actual derivation is when we discuss the Gauss theorem of electrostatics. So this is just the basic introduction that what is Gauss law in case you don't know. This is the simple way of expressing it and what does it actually mean I have just tell, told you. 
Here in particular, we are concerned with differential form of Gauss theorem. So I'm assuming that you guys know what is Gauss theorem of electrostatics. And now I'm just moving forward to find the differential form of Gauss theorem. And if you still have any problem regarding Gauss theorem, you can refer to one of my videos. The video title is Gauss theorem of electrostatics. So you can refer to that. Okay, so now let's get started. We have this theorem. Now let me tell you how we have to proceed. Here we have taken Gauss law, Gauss theorem and what does it state? It states whatever the integration that we have taken, we are saying that we are taking surface integral of E over dS. But remember, we are saying whatever is happening, it is happening over the closed surface S. This is the most important thing to see here. This expression tells a lot. It tells us that Q is present everywhere. It tells us epsilon naught is the permittivity of the region. E is the electric field. But the most important thing to notice here, if we want to derive this differential form, is to notice that integration is with respect to surface and we are having a closed surface a closed surface and we know if something is closed it is definitely gonna enclose something right and we have done stokes theorem we have done gauss divergence theorem can you tell me which theorem would be used here well in case of stokes theorem we say that we have a closed boundary we have a curve which is a closed one and if a curve is a closed curve it will enclose what it will enclose surface and if we have this curve and the surface then we have to use curl you know that but if the entity which is closed is surface then what would it enclose here we have closed surface and we know that closed surface encloses what it encloses volume so here we have a closed surface s and if we have closed surface s then that means it is going to enclose some volume now we have surface as well as volume so what do we need to find can we find curl out of it no we cannot for surface and volume we have divergence and if we have divergence then which theorem we would use yes Gauss divergence theorem so this is how if you know the basics of the divergence and curl and also the Gauss divergence theorem and Stokes theorem you would be able to know that how and when you can use those theorems because those theorems are not just left to just as a part of a syllabus and they won't stick there only we would use Gauss divergence theorem and Stokes theorem everywhere in all the forthcoming derivations we would either be using Gauss divergence or Stokes theorem but when to use how to use this can only be understood if we understand Gauss divergence and Stokes theorem properly now here the main point to notice was that the closed something which is we often say is closed that is surface we are talking of a closed surface here and closed surface will enclose volume and if we have both surface and volume then we need to find divergence and for that we have gauss divergence theorem now it's the time to use gauss divergence theorem this is what gauss divergence theorem looks like mathematically and here a represents some vector function here for differential form of gauss theorem what is our vector function the vector function is electric field electric field is a vector quantity it has magnitude as well as direction you can see here we have drawn the arrow which represents the direction of electric field q is just charge which is having magnitude we don't associate charge with with direction 
if charges flow in particular direction then that is electric field basically or current that we say but still current is a scalar quantity we'll discuss that in some other topic but here if this is the standard expression for gauss divergence theorem then we have to replace this vector function with the actual vector quantity that we are facing here and that is e so if i put e in place of a then what do we get so here i can write down e dot ds and here we would be having del dot e dv okay all i have done is just replacing a by e if rho is the volume charge density within the space which is bounded by the surface s you know that charges they can be present on the curve along the boundary they can be spread over some surface or they can be distributed over some volume charges have this kind of freedom either you can place all these charges along some curve so they would in that case represent line charge density because charges are arranged on a line you can also spread them over some surface in that case they would represent surface charge density the charges which are distributed over some surface and we can also distribute them over some volume and if charges are present over some volume some three dimensional space then we can refer to them as volume charge density means charges dispersed or spread over some volume here as we know that this surface s is actually enclosing some volume so this charges the charges that we have shown here they are not spread over some space they are actually spread over some volume we are covering some volume because this surface s is enclosing some volume and that's why we need here volume charge density and not surface charge density okay since this is a closed surface so charges are not spread over the surface in fact this surface is enclosing some volume so charges are actually accumulated over some volume this whole blue region this is is actually a volume it's a three dimensional space you can consider and for volume charge density we use the symbol rho rho is also used to denote density so here for volume charge density we use the symbol rho we have different symbol for line charge density and surface charge density so if that's the case then we have this simple charge which is equals to rho dv because what do we have we have charge upon volume is equal to rho this is the expression that we have density is what density is mass upon volume here this rho is volume charge density so in, in case of mass now we have charge and volume is still there so charge upon volume gives us volume charge density so for charge we can write this down as rho dv because we say that whatever volume is there we are going to consider very small volume you know that in vector analysis whenever we deal with vectors we always deal with smaller quantities infinitesimal amounts so that's why we have written dv here and if dv is there then definitely we need triple integral so whatever step we take there is reason behind it and you should never cram the steps you should know the reason why we are doing this why we are doing the next step everything is determined okay and defined now if i use these equations 1 2 and 3 you can see that in equation 1 and equation 2 this particular portion is common here you can see that right so e dot ds is common in both equations 1 and 2 so we are left with this del dot e dv and q by epsilon not this we have written del dot e dv is equal to q by epsilon not from this 
equation 1 and equation 2. Okay, and you can see how is it different because E dot DS is common. Now, let's see equation third. It says Q, simply Q is equal to triple integral of volume charge density. We can put this particular thing, this right hand side of equation 3 in place of Q. So, if we do that, this becomes 1 by epsilon naught remains as such and here we have, here we can mention this volume V because we are talking of volume V, rho dV. Okay, and now we have these two terms to deal with. From these two parts, we can write down, first just write down these as it is. So, we have del dot E dV is equal to 1 by epsilon naught and here we have this triple integral of rho dV. Now, here also we have volume integral and on the right side also we have volume integral. On the both sides we have volume integral. You can see triple integrals and dV. Here also triple integral and dV. We can remove them since both the sides are equal so we can remove them. But remember you cannot show like that you have cut these two. No, that is meaningless again. You can never just simply cut the integrals that you have drawn. So don't do this please. Though we always love, most of the students, even I, enjoy cutting the common terms which are getting cancelled. But please don't do that. This is integral. Integration, you are representing integration. Integration never gets cancelled out. We simply just remove it. Okay. So please don't do that. So in the next step, we will simply remove them. And what do we have? We have del dot E. And from here we have rho upon epsilon naught. And this is our final expression. Since you know what is this? This is our del operator which is a differential operator. And this is all what we need. We have removed the integral. And now our final expression involves only the differential operator and the terms. So this is the differential form of Gauss theorem. This is the standard expression, the differential form of Gauss law and you have to remember it because we use it directly in further derivations. Even if you can't remember but it's very easy to derive. See we didn't do anything extra. We just started with the original statement of Gauss theorem and then we only applied Gauss divergence theorem. Then we used this uh, formula that here the charge is distributed over the volume so that's why we need volume charge density and this. So this derivation is the simplest of all. You can see it's just sending in hardly 4-5 steps. So even if you remember this uh, that's very good but if you forget this then remember the actual statement of Gauss theorem and utilize the steps to derive this back. So this is differential form of Gauss law. We have removed all the integrations. There are no integration. Only we have del operator. And del operator is differential operator. You know how it looks like. This del operator is what? This is I cap curly by curly x plus J cap curly by curly y plus K cap curly by curly z. So that means you are going to differentiate whatever quantity is there. So it's a differential operator. Always remember whenever you have del in some equation that is differential form of that particular equation. And if you have integral signs then that is known as integral form. Similarly we derive the differential form of Faraday's law, integral form of Faraday's law. So in integral form we end up with integrals in our expression and if we have differential form then we end up having this del operator in our expression. So this is very crucial point to remember. That's all for today. Keep learning, keep watching Physics for All by Shilpi Bhuller. Thank you.